How's it going, people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Forever Arsenal podcast. Apologies, people. Lee just said it before we went um, live or press record. It's been a little while. It's been a little while. We were meant to give you a show in between, um, but with days off and, and, and uh, well, James on holiday. It we couldn't be asked. Work. Just, just, just yeah. be honest. We couldn't be asked, Turkish. Oh. No, we just couldn't oh. be Oh, there you go. Hey, you you nearly <laughs> couldn't be asked to make today's show, and you're the reason it's 8 a.m. So, over to you, Jordan. <laughs> hands up, hands up. Apologies, I almost messed up this morning, but I've missed you guys, man. I've missed you. You missed, missed us so much. You told us 8 a.m. show, and you're on the train, and they couldn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how much I missed you. Yeah, yeah. Nah, nah. It's true, though. It's true, though. This pod become part of you know the furniture in a sense. Every week, you know, we we we're previewing, reviewing all of that, and yeah, this international break it was just a quiet one. Usually, we do something, whether it's the the, the unfair play quiz or the draft. Usually, international break we do something, but. I think we all needed the the calm before the storm, as they call it. Um, and yeah, the storm is coming. But before we talk about that storm, big up James, big up Lee, big up Jordan. Hit the like button, people. Let's get to a thousand likes. It's the first forever in about 10, 12 days. Um, so hopefully, you know, the love is still there. Make sure you leave your comments. Do all of that good stuff, people. Um, nothing to review today. Maybe we review the internationals and, and the game time for a couple of Arsenal players. Um but then we'll get straight into City as well. Like I said, the calm before the storm. The storm is coming and the Etihad is on Sunday. Um, who should we start with? Who should we start with? Lee, Lee. Well, not even start with. How you been, Lee? All good? Yeah, all good. Yeah, apart from me back. Other than that, all good. Yeah. Um, back went into spasm on Monday. Just probably thinking about Jordan. I think that's why that went into spasm. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I've been in a bit of bother the last few days, but getting there, getting there. I think my, uh, you know, I'm um, getting nervous for the game. I think like, I've gone out in sympathy for all the players getting injured. I think, like, you know, I felt a bit left out of it. So, um, yeah. yeah, other than that, all good. I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing for Sunday. I'm going to, I'm not going to lie. I am not going <laughs> to lie. I don't know if we're going to win. I don't know if we're going to draw. I don't know if we're going to lose. But I tell you what, I'm looking forward to it because where I think last season we sort of staggered our way into it you know this this one I think we're going there with confidence and this is the first time in a very very long while that we are going to the team and feeling that we could get something for it and I'll tell you what I felt like this when I went to Anfield I thought I had the nerves about going to Anfield when we went there and we put in a good performance and I'm expecting the same again like you know I, I wouldn't be surprised if he won this game I wouldn't be surprised if he lost it I wouldn't be surprised if he drew it but I'll tell you what and I urge us all to just enjoy it because this is what we wanted this is what we wanted these are the you know I was jealous of Liverpool and um, teams like that a few years ago when these big games are coming on but like all of a sudden it's being billed as the game of the season and Arsenal <laughs> involved in it so I, I'm, I can't wait for it yeah, yeah this is what we waited on to be right here where we are now, where we've been the last couple of seasons in a title race after the last international break. Um, James, how are you, my bro? Yeah, good. I think Lee summed up perfectly there for the first time. And um, it's sorry, I've missed you too. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think he summed up perfectly. I, I think it is it is a enjoy occasion for the fans really i think for the players it's got to be business as usual for the fans it's enjoy it because yeah we haven't been apart in these kind of games for a while and you're right when the two games against city came up came up last year you know they were bigger than what we you know had for a while but you're right we went into we limped into those games having dropped points the run wasn't quite right and it wasn't until we got past that game that we started to put some momentum together was then we went into last season with the three draws and thinking if we lose this game then that gap that we had for a lot of the season you know was completely gone by that point so there was a different kind of pressure with this one it doesn't feel like there's this kind of like um almost like this impre- what's the word guys like almost like a pressure uh, not to be embarrassed. I don't know, like, you know, oh, we, we we bottled the lead and we were five points clear. Now, they, there's kind of none of that as part of the discussion. It's just two teams separated by a point going into a big, you know, title clash. And I think we can focus on the game rather than kind of all the outside narrative mm-hmm. and all that. Um, we faced them twice already this season, all right, Community Shield. One of them, <laughs> I thought, both cagey games, but both games I thought we looked better than them in. Not by much, not a lot in it. 
I think on another day, you know, two deflected goals don't go in the back of the net. But I never thought that they looked the better team in those games. But now the Etihad is a level up. You know, we've been building up to it from the Community Shield to doing it in the Premier League to now doing it at the Etihad. So the tests have got harder and harder. Um, I think we're ready for it. Um, and let's see. It's I think we can win. A draw is a good result, in my opinion. Um, but but I what I really don't want more than anything is to come out of that game going, Arsenal looked inferior to City again. Like, really, when it came down to it, they are just a better team. And I, I don't think it will look like that. <clears throat> You see, it, it could be a likely scenario come Sunday. But I'm with Lee. I mean, this is what, this is what it's all about. What you know, they're saying make or break. What's make or break without the make? Because I break. feel like a win doesn't guarantee a title, but I think a loss makes it very, very difficult to, to turn it around. Well, well I think yeah. on that, I think, sorry, go on, James. Go on, go on. No, no, you, you go. I was going to say, yeah, on that point, Turkish, I think the biggest positive we can take from this game is that a defeat isn't terminal. I don't think a defeat is terminal, but I agree with you. I think a defeat puts us third favourites. I think it yeah. then makes it very hard for us to win the title. Not, not impossible, but you're then hoping that City have to probably lose two games from the remaining nine, and then Arsenal have to win nine from nine. Do you know what I mean? So it's not terminal, but it, it then makes it very, very difficult in a way that in previous seasons, you, there's certain games you lose, it's done. I don't think it's done, but I think it makes it very hard for us. But I, I'm, I'm with you and, and Lee. I think let's embrace it. Let's enjoy it, man. We've, I keep saying we've been through the mud. We've been a banter club for 10, 15 years. We've worked hard to get back to a team that can be respected. I forget respected externally from other fans and other pundits and other, other football the wider football family, if you like, even internally, we've got a team that we can be proud of. We've got a team that we can go to the Emirates and watch. We've got a team now that we genuinely, not with delusion, but genuinely can think we can beat City at the Etihad. When was the last time you said with a straight face and not being biased at all, we can go to the Etihad and win? In fact, even at home against City, I, didn't, I don't fancy Arsenal in previous years. So I think we need to just embrace and enjoy the fact that... <clears throat> We're in this position. We have worked hard. Mikel Arteta, Edu, even the ownership, they have worked hard this last two or three years to get us in this position where with 10 games to go, we are in the title race. Laurie said about a month ago in a pod um, that he thought it was the, this, this was the business end. This is when the running starts. I disagreed. I think now the running starts. I think this is, this is when it really, really, okay, we're going to see who can handle pressure. This is when it really, really matters for me. We've done the work in recovering from a really poor Christmas New Year period. And I didn't want to... I didn't want to focus on this Man City game. If you remember pods back, you guys were thinking about, let's get to this. I was like, nope, one game at a time. We're here now. Now we're here. Let's get to work. Yeah. You know, you know what, um, when you say, is it, make or break. I think it is because at this moment in time, a draw is, a, as, as James alluded to, is a good result. I don't think it's, I, don't, I think it's a good result, but what that does is it puts the, the, um, the title in Liverpool's hands and we Agreed. have to hope that something happens with Liverpool. If we lose to C, we're hoping it goes into then both, both of them teams, we've got to hope to drop points, not just one. Where in the past, it's just been one, it's now two, you know, so I do think it's very, very, imp I, I, I know, if we win on on um, Sunday, it doesn't mean to say we're going to win the title. But I do think yeah. if we if we lose, I don't think that we will win the title. I think it, it, it's out of uh, Liverpool and Man City. That's how big this game is. But you know, I, I think you're right, Jordan. Like you know, people are now starting to respect Arsenal in in, in ways when, and I say this all of a sudden. We, our players are being compared to, oh, well, he wasn't as good as Saka when he was 18. He wasn't as good as this when he was there. Oh, we're not as good as our... I love all that. Bring that on. Because do you know what? It means we're relevant again. It really does. You know what I mean? I I, I see people are, are, are going for our... Uh, um, Go out, out Ferdinand. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm not. You know what I mean? I'm actually thinking to myself, you know, this is fantastic. This is great. This is what we want. Because I'm looking at it and thinking to myself, yeah, all of a sudden, we're talking about Arsenal again. We're having a, having a go at the Arsenal. And do you know what? When we was winning titles, 
back in the 80s, back in the 90s, there was always something that they was having a go at us, whether it be Tony Adams, whether it be uh, whatever. Uh, Arsene Wenger, it's great. Arsenal are back in the hunt, and that's what it's all about in my eyes. Yeah, you're right. I remember the lack of English players used to be something in the media. Yeah, that was another pop, wasn't it? Yeah, you're right. It was always a little pop everywhere, every now and then. You know what I mean? And everybody now is comparing everybody to Saka. Like, as soon as somebody comes on the scene, uh, it's about Saka. Um, and, and the, oh, but he's not world class. He's not this and he's that. Well, why are you comparing him to a sacker all the time then? Why is everybody comparing him? Do you know why? Because he is good. And we know he's good. And do you know what? Arsenal were back. And that's what we, we, that's what we've always... And that is the frustration of me over the years. You know what I mean? Like, But, I, I you know, whatever happens on Wednesday, yeah, if, listen, I'm, I'm not going to lie up. If we lose, I'm going to be gutted and all that. But at this moment, I'm going, oh, I am going to Manchester City. I'm travelling up there. Proud to be an Arsenal fan. I've actually gone to Manchester City, Liverpool, Chelsea, those teams there thinking, oh, I ain't going to be three or four. Yeah. Just not thinking, oh, no. Like, and when it is three or four, oh, like, you know, this is it. I'm not going there. We, we could we could end up getting smashed. You don't know what's going to happen, refereeing decisions. But I'm going up there, chest out. We can do this. Mm. And that's, that's Arsenal, Arteta, the club, Edo, they've given me that back. I was going up and down the country with my eyes shut. Now I'm going there with, with my chest out, like wanting, wanting, thinking, thinking that we might win on Sunday. That's unbelievable. That's that's mm-hmm. a plus in my mind. When three or four years ago, even last season, I not I went there he's hoping. You, we, after, we didn't we, we didn't really believe it, did we, Lee? We didn't we really didn't believe, believe it. I no. didn't really no. believe. I wanted to believe. Mm. I wanted to believe that we could. After two minutes, I knew we weren't. But listen, at the end of it, I I feel a lot more confident going up there on on this game here. And just one more thing I want to say, right? John Stones, you know what I mean? It's gone down in my estimations. Unbelievable. Like, you know, I know I might not be able to get my words out and all that, but he obviously didn't go to school or anything like that. To turn around and say that, oh, I didn't know who I was playing it, don't, don't insult us. Don't insult us that you didn't know who you was playing last week. You are not that... Good. This this basic John John Stone during an irrelevant club that's only relevant because of the money. Don't turn around and start saying, "Oh, I didn't even know who we got and all that." Like you know, you you know. What I mean, I hope he is playing on Sunday because I want to. I might even tell him something like you know. What I mean? thick, <laughs> thick, 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 daily. I will not tolerate that kind of language, Lee. No, but that, you know, I mean, like, I'm not. There's so much disrespect. But again, let's let's take on all of that, like you know, what yeah. I mean, like you know, I don't even take... understand. I don't even understand off the back of that. I keep on seeing, ah, oh, he's such a professional. He, he's taking it one game at a time. I'm thinking, yeah, one game at a time. Arsenal are next. That's fucking one game. Right? Yeah, How you... No, like, he, he, what does he think? We're so gullible on that, like you know, what I mean, he's been thinking of that game for three weeks. Guaranteed, like we all have. As soon as that game finished, um, near last game, of course, you start thinking. I know you've got internationals and all that, but they're friendlies, you know what I mean? Like, you know, uh, ask him who's playing in the first World Cup, uh, Euros game. I, if he if he don't know, then I, I, I'll be shocked. Be shocked oh, if he don't know that he got Serbia in the first game. Shocked. So he don't know he's got Arsenal in a, in, in a week's time. Do me a favour. It's all little things like that, just to dig at Arsenal, that is. Well, it ain't that big, like, you know what I mean? Well, it is big. I don't care. At the end of the day, as soon as that game against Porto was finished, I knew we was Man City up next. And I'll tell you what, that's making me a winner, not him. I'll tell you, like, you know, let's hope we go there and stuff them. I really do. It's just the disrespect for that football club is great, you know what I mean? 115 charges, you know what I mean? They've got don't like, rise to it, Lee. It's all no, mind no, games. He knew what he was doing. I'm not even worried about that. Do you know, they're not even worried about that because the FA is corrupt. I, I've heard on the grapevine they're going to get 15 points given to them. That's how bad it is. Like, <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> he made one enough points over the years. Is another yeah, yeah. We could give you another 15, you know what I mean? Go on. To go, they're ridiculous, you know what I mean? And I am going to rattle it because at the end of the day, I, I'm proud of what Arsenal's done over the last couple of years. You know what I mean? And I don't care. We haven't ch- we've chucked money at it. Yes, we have, right? But we've done it properly. Like Liverpool have, we've done it properly. If if a player doesn't work, we have to go with it. You know what I mean? We don't just throw him out like like uh like Manchester City have done with certain players and then like let, let them go for nothing and whatever. We've had to make sure that the buyer players we buy 
are going to be right for this football club and make sure that they fit into the system and whatever. Not just go, I'll tell you what, we're having him and him. Oh, and if it don't work out, it don't matter. You know, we're just, doc- we're just, uh, we play with the old figures. No, you do it properly. And we've done it properly. And if, if Arsenal don't win this title, then I want Liverpool to win it. Lee woke yeah. up and chose violence today. Yeah. It's, it's not going to pop at everyone. Yeah. Hey, City fans. The third back. <laughs> the back. <laughs> He's been in it. <laughs> On the, we just talked about Saka and Stones, two players that, you know, England international duty, much has been said about it. But it does look like we, we've we've come out better than Man City have, that's for sure, in terms of risks, injuries, problems from the international break with, with both Stones and Walker coming off, but it seems like Walker might be ready. Um, but Stones would have been a big player for them. Well, both came off. So I saw a video, and it might just be one of those YouTubers talking nonsense, but I saw a video this morning that says that, you notice they both came off in the first 10 minutes. Stones and Walker, if you notice, in both games, they both came off in the first 10 minutes, and he's he was posing this theory that it's all games, right? And, you know, they're both going to be fine. It was all part of the, the tactics to try and... Um, protect themselves for, for for this game on the weekend. Look, we'll see if they play on the weekend or not. The Walker injury the Walker injury looks like it might keep him out of the game. I think I saw him rated at 50-50, but I just found it interesting that someone had picked up on the fact that it might be a coincidence, but they picked up on the fact that both players, you know what I mean, had come off. But I don't I don't mind all that. I don't mind all that. I was saying leading up to the game, I hope that we do that. And we did. We took out Saka. <laughs> Is Saka injured? Of course he's not injured. Of course he's not injured. But you play yeah. the game. You play the game, man. So even if they are playing mind games and they're not really injured, I respect it. You do what you got to do to protect your team. They're doing it. We're doing it. And I've, I don't have a. I don't have an issue with it personally. I, th- I think yeah, Stones would are... be major. So, yeah, yeah, Stones would be. I don't know. I think we'll know. I mean, if John Stones is fit as well on the weekend, because even Southgate to come out and speak on it, didn't he? Um, mm. What was the problem? You said it in the preview. Abductor. What's that? Sorry, I don't actually don't even know what that is. Stomach it's muscle. Stomach, it's yeah. All right, fine. Um, Shank, we wouldn't know about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we ain't got no kind of problems, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, no, I've never, never pulled one of those. Um, yeah, he's massive. He's massive because um, because he's the only one, as we've talked about in the previews, which, by the way, are coming out on AFTV soon. Um, we're talking about how he's the one that gives them that opportunity to move to a back three, to overload the midfield. And he does it so well. Like when he's playing centre back, he looks a good centre back. When he moves into midfield, he looks completely natural in that area. And I think Arsenal don't want to get bullied on that part of the pitch because that's what we've been doing so well recently. The likes of Rice and Jorginho dominating games, whether it's been White inverting, Zinchenko in fit, whatever. Like we've had a really good balance there. We've had a really good control the word that Arteta prefers not to use he prefers the word dominate but we have had really good control of games outside really the Porto ties um so Stones would be a big miss and I don't really see how they will try and replicate kind of what he does I will say when we played them at the Etienne the 4-1 win they they were quite direct against us in that game they were more go long you know avoid the Arsenal press go long to Harlem Mm -hmm. but bully Rob Holding you know, create some chaos around him and Gabriel. De Bruyne pick up second balls. You know, it was it was a different approach, and I'm wondering whether we get that from City in this game. Um, and if they do, then do you need your second ball winners in there more than you know? I love Jorginho, and I'm not I don't have the exact numbers you know in my head on how good the positioning of the likes of Jorginho and Rice are, but from the eye test, that they're, they're good at getting you know when there's kind of that ball being traded possession within a couple of seconds, they're good at getting there and winning the ball back. And we might just want those two to sit in front. I can imagine it being quite a cagey game, basically, is what I'm saying in a very nerdy way. I can imagine there being a lot of, not a lot happening. You know, when you look at the shot count at the end, I'd be amazed if either team has more than 15 shots. I think it will be one of those nine shots to seven, you know? Um, And it would just be about showing some quality on the day. I think it could be an interesting one because... Look at the, you said it yesterday, Haaland, zero XG against us across two yeah. games. I, I know Pep doesn't like that sort of stuff. I I imagine he will come in with something different. I don't know if he can come in with the same tactics that exposed us last year because it's Saliba and Gabriel this time. 
But Saliba and Gabriel have been solid against them the last couple of times, solid enough to the point where the best striker, you know, in in the league, top two in the world, isn't even getting a sniff. So I expect Guardiola to do something different. Mikel, I'm not sure how to analyse that first game and and work out whether he goes in the same again. Obviously, there's different variables. It's an away game. Um, but... We came out with a 1-0 win. But when I look at the overall performance, I don't know if there's things he can jig. You know, this is a big one for Mikel as well, I think, because it's, it's like full circle. You know, we've we've knocked down all the other obstacles we had. We've knocked down all the other narratives that, you know, Arteta walked into the club having. You know, we get smoked by Liverpool. We get smoked by City. You know, we, we don't challenge and, and so on. This is the last narrative that kind of needs, needs to start changing. You know, can we stand up and fight away at City. We've done it against Liverpool. You know, we've done it a few times now. It's it's City that's the one that really, you know, we need to we need to get past that hurdle. And I think it'll be interesting because I can see a cagey game, but I could also see a game where we'll be surprised by the attacking intent from from potentially both sides. I I, I think maybe we go for more of a counter approach, especially if Martinelli is available. I think we start, you know, go go over the top and 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 look at look for our outlets. If Martinelli's not ready, that's a big problem for us. I think as big a problem for us as it would be for Stones because over the top outlet wise, I don't think we've got anyone that really replicates what Martinelli can give us. Reese would be the closest, but I don't even think you know that's just me saying because he's a bit pacey. So I think Martinelli will be a big one. But I'm just I'm just thinking there's going to be it's going to be an exciting game. I don't think it'll be as easy as people think. They may want to blow us away, like they did last season, you know, with the early goal and the, yeah, they were quite direct. And you know, obviously they end up beating us four one. I just I feel like Pep Guardiola will show us a degree of respect. But then I kind of go back to thinking we do need to remember as Arsenal fans that De Bruyne didn't start either of the games, you know, the community shield or the game at the Emirates. Um he didn't start the community shield, right? I don't think he did. He came on, I believe. I think he came on, yeah. 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 Um yeah. And then at the you know, the Emirates, they didn't have Rodri and De Bruyne. I mean, that's like us going into this game without Rice and Erdegaard. You know, what would we be saying? You know, so I do think there is that point where we could take a lot of confidence, but there's got to be that precaution. The reason I can mainly see it being cage is I think Arteta will be quite pragmatic at first. I thought the idea to go man for man against them with Rob Holding last season was a disaster. I mean, it was, a, it was a disaster of a decision. You could see we never settled into that game. I know they scored inside six minutes, which is early, but what's crazy is they had us on the ropes for a minute, two, three, four. So I, I think I think teams will, will feel our way into it. So it's that first game back from the international break. Can we be slightly sluggish? Um, and then and then again, yeah, if it starts to open up, an early goal might do that, maybe a mistake, maybe something, then just sort of swings the game a little bit and forces forces the game plan on another team. If they score early, then our, maybe if we are to be more pragmatic, we have to start playing at some point. If we score early, then they're going to come flying at us. I th- Extra I think day that- helps, James, I think, for, from the international break. And a couple of things here, like, you know, yeah, they didn't have those players playing against us that day, and we didn't have um, Martinelli and Saka playing that day. Like yeah, that. that's very true, we didn't. Uh, and, and the game before that, when we played them in the in the home game, we had parties, remember, going out in the first... It was all the rumours about that. I'm desperate for um, Walker and Stones to play. Desperate. I hope they do play because I tell you what, I think psychologically that's a good thing for us. You know what I mean? Because obviously, like, look at it both ways. If they've both done that in an international after 10 minutes, um, whoa, they must be worried about us to, to fake injuries in international after 10 minutes, which I don't believe, if I'll be honest. Right? And... Then it's desperation to get them fit. I remember Martinelli getting a little slight hamstring injury at Everton, and everybody going, "Oh, he'd be back next week." It wasn't. It was. He come off precaution. It was about two or three weeks late before he come back. Like you know, um, and I, I'm going to say this now: Walker will not test that hamstring out until hopefully Martinelli runs him. That is when he really test it out, like you know, and it's you know so. You know, that that first run on from Martinelli, if Martinelli's playing, will be very, very important. And I, I do think, you know, if you come off after 10 minutes of a game on a... When, when they play Tuesday, so they've got a few days, but it does show you there's a little bit of a... 
desperation for him to be fit for the for the next game. I, I'm saying this when you look at our oh, Man City. This is this massive squad and everything like that. A few years ago, if one of their players were going out, you go, right, oh, don't matter. They got so and so, so and so. All of a sudden, they're sort of like, oh, they're desperate to play Walker. They're desperate to get in uh, Stones. They weren't a couple of years ago. So I think it's a good thing. So um, I, I, I'll be really interested about that. I, I, I'm with you, Turkish. I'm, I'm hearing rumours about Martinelli and not. He's not being put in photos and all that. Let's get that straight. You know what I mean? They ain't going to put no photos up of Gabriel, Saka and, and Martinelli. They, they ain't going to do that. They take your photos and, you know, if it, and they'll check them before they go, oh, there's a little one in the background of Martinelli or whatever. Get rid of them. Like, you know, they ain't going to, they ain't going to show their hand. But I'm with you. If that when that team sheet comes out, I'm going to be more, not say disappointed, but I'll be more confident if I see Martinelli on that team sheet for exactly those reasons. We need his pace. We need to stretch Manchester City, and if there's any player that can do it, bet. bet. I watched Trossard in the week. Like I thought, technically brilliant against England, but he he never could never really stretch England's back four. Martinelli can do that, and that, and I think in this game, you're right, Sergio. We need someone that's going to stretch the game, mm-hmm. and and if it's not Martinelli, it's got to be Jesus out there. Yeah, shout. Sure. I'm I'm. Mm, I'll come to the Martinelli point in a second. Um, was it you, James, that was with me two seasons ago when we did the watch long for the Spurs game? And it was the one where it was a battle for top four. It was at yeah. Spurs. Right. And the, it was my first watch along. And I remember everybody in the studio that day talking about passion and aggression and fight. And that's we got, we got a really, it was all that kind of energy. I and I remember saying to Laurie, and I think you agree with me as well, I said, no, no, this is not the game for passion. It's not the game for fight. Mm-hmm. This is the game for intelligence and cool heads. We don't have to win. I remember saying it, we do not have to win this game. A draw is a good result. If we get involved in the whole passion thing, we're going to lose it. Yeah. So this game coming up, I think it's the opposite. I think this game actually is going to be about passion. It is going to be about fight. It is going to be about aggression. I think we can talk about tactics all day long. For me, what wins this game, who works the harder? That's what wins this game for me. Manchester City, for all of their fantastic qualities, all of their brilliance, all of their tactical flexibility, all things they can... The the most important thing that makes them win games, they just outwork everybody. And the Liverpool game was the was the was the blueprint for me to show us how you play City. You've just got to outwork them. And I think from minute one, we have got to show that whatever you you can do, we can match it and better it. We've got to win all our first headers, definitely second balls. We've got to show that we can we can track block crosses. We can I just think this is a game for us. It's simplicity. It's going to be about who works harder. That is the hallmark of City's success. They just work better than work harder than everybody else. If we're going to win this game, we've got to do that. And on the Martinelli thing, I, I agree with you, Lee. I don't know if he's fit to play or not, but he's not been great this season. He's not been good. He scored the winner at the Emirates um, in, in what's one of the most important games for us this season. I think we need another moment or performance like that from Martinelli. He wasn't actually great in that game, but I think we need a performance from him. And I agree. Let's test that hamstring. Let's really he, test that Walker hamstring because I think that's our that, outlet. He was the guy that stood up tallest for me last year in the running, probably maybe the only one in the attack. Agree. That. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. So I'm hoping right. that, you know, it, it's, it's slightly in reverse. It seems like everything's in reverse this season that we've started mm. slow. Big Steve said it. Yesterday, we went to Etihad, like James said, we've got previews coming at Box to Boxes, Combined 11, so look out for all of it. But he said something, and perfect description. Yes, last season, it felt like, listen, the trajectory of last season was always on the rise. And then it just felt like it went a bit stale, and then it was tailing off. This season, it feels like it was, you can't say started stale, because we still started, you know, winning games and, you know, competing at the top. But it was steady, steady, steady. And the trajectory this calendar year has started mm-hmm. going up right into the business end of the season. We've got to just hope that Martinelli is the, the, a similar story that, you know, we when we compare season on season, we say, well, you know, he he, he was causing a riot in the first half of last season and, uh, and then continued it towards the end. Everyone else let him down this season. He was saved. I, I'd rather look at it like that. I'd rather look. Come May, come June, look back and say Martinelli was saved for this business end. 
he, he you know Arteta yeah. definitely played this the right way with him because his energy, his bite, his that South American in him. The South Americans have that 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 I don't know what it is, but they've got that never say die attitude. You know, they'll fight till they'll fight for everything, and and Martinelli's got that in abundance. So I feel like if he clicks going into this this crucial stage. With Jesus back off the bench, with Havertz doing well up front, with Saka being Saka all season, we'd be in a very, very good position because defensively, I think that's been the best part of, of Arsenal this season. I don't think there's any concerns there, especially, listen, touch wood, that, you know, last season injuries hampered us. This season, all of our injuries are, you know, returning to the fold and they're returning to the fold as depth which is a welcome change to last season where it looked like we had to have them in order to win something. Do you know what? There's another important thing, um, and it could change what mentality of both teams is what happens in the game before. Um, because if Liverpool to win that game, you know, City will think like a draw at home is not good enough. Mm -hmm. You know, but if, say, for instance, Brighton do get a draw, I think both teams... City and Arsenal would say a draw is a good result then. You know, it's a good result for us, but uh, it would even be a good result for City. So I don't know if that would... I don't, would it change the way that the teams would think and play or or, or are they just going to focus on, on that game? That would be an interesting question to ask afterwards if, if that was to pan out. Because I, I think if Liverpool do win that game, you know, if City were to draw... It puts them in a real difficult position, right? You know, so that where they've got to, I'm, got to hope Liverpool slip up twice. I'm not so sure. I, I think that the, the differentials are so tight. I think we have to where there's an opportunity, and there is this weekend. City and Arsenal have to try to dent their rival as much as possible. And I don't know if a draw, even regardless of what Liverpool do, help City or Arsenal. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm I'm not sure they'll look at it as Liverpool drop points. So a you know, point is a good result for us. I just think it's so tight. I think you've got to win. You know what it is about this stage of the season? Because games are coming so thick and fast. I'll, I'll, look, I'll, I'll mention last season again. End of last season, for me, five points was never enough. Because towards the end of the season, games thick and fast. You're playing two league games in seven days. And... A five-point difference can just go like that. And we saw that ourselves, let alone a one-point difference or a two-point mm. difference or a three-point with nine games to go. I feel, look, this coming week, there's there's two league games coming up in five days, I believe, right? Because there's midweek yeah. fixtures next yeah. week. So, listen, we, we're all talking about Sunday and what could potentially happen. But come Friday after, it could all be changed again. Um I don't know. I think man. it's three league games in six days, too. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. Yeah. It is. We played Brighton on the Saturday, didn't we? So Yeah, you're right. So Nine three points. games in six days. Nine it's points. an interesting conversation around... Um, I, I was watching the overlap and Gary Neville was saying that, yeah, you can't expect your rivals to do favours for you, you know, or, or other clubs to do favours for you. You, you want to win the league, you've got to go beat Man City. And where mm -hmm. I slightly disagree is... It's kind of right. I mean, when Antonio Conte's Chelsea won, they did go and beat City. When um, Leicester won it, they did go and win away at City. And these were kind of considered their closest rivals at the time when those games were being played. But I think Arsenal have done really, really well in these big games this season. We've beaten City and Liverpool at the Emirates. We've drawn at Anfield. If we can't with a draw at the Etihad, and we're saying we've got two wins and two draws against in the four games against our title rivals... I don't. I don't think I can really be mad at Arsenal for that. For me, they like they've done their job in their big games. Don't lose away from home. Don't concede any points to them. But go claim your three at the Emirates. Um, the problem is because we're in the run and it feels like there's an opportunity to take control, and we shouldn't expect anyone else to do that for us. The thing is, we're a point ahead of City. So if we get the draw, we've stayed. We've kept that point distance. And then it's about Liverpool winning and then hoping someone does a favour for us with them. So it's all this about some maybes that no one can predict. Ultimately, everyone, you know, the sign of champions is play to win. And I think City and Guardiola have, I mean, maybe sometimes, but they've rarely gone into games thinking, you know, oh, a draw's fine. You know, they play to win. But I do think when I've watched Liverpool and City over the years, they have traded blows and come out with draws. I think City's results against 
the big six this season are poor. Tottenham drew at the Etihad. Chelsea drew at the Etihad. They've played Liverpool twice and haven't beaten. They've played Arsenal and lost. So City have two points from nine in these title you know, title face-offs, let's call them, whatever you want to call them. Um, so I also, look, I also come out quite good on that, in that kind of sense. Um, do, but do, do you guys feel we have to win? Is anyone feeling like if we don't win, we've squandered an opportunity? I, I just can't I, I, feel I that. Oh, no, you can't say that against them. I, I, I do. I think if we don't win, I, I, as I mentioned, it's not terminal, but we become, we're, we're currently now second sure. favourites for the title. Sure. If I, I think even a draw. I think if, I think a draw puts us on. I the think back if we win it, Jordan, we'd we'd be favourites. I agree the, with that. I, I agree. You know, I, I think even now, yeah. I think we're still are we third favourites for us. I'm not too sure if we're third favourites. I know we're second favourites. Second, in the second league, second we? favourites. If we win, it changes. If we win, it changes the um, changes everything. Yeah, it changes how we look on this run in dramatically. Suddenly, Bayern Munich is, I mean, for some, it's already a let's have it. I'm certainly in that camp to a degree, but it becomes a really like, this team can do it. And sometimes you just build momentum, momentum. And you can look at other sides that, I'm trying to think of other sides that won the title of the years, but it's bloody Man City. But you know, when they have that result, that makes you sit up and go as a fan, you go, oh, it, okay. Oh, that's a problem. Um, yeah. You know, and, and I think we're, and, you know, at the Emirates, the thing about the Emirates ones is they're never going to be taken as seriously because teams in the Premier League can win their home games. Wolves beat City earlier this season at Molyneux. And that was a surprise, but it wasn't like an utter shock. We've seen that, that can happen in the Premier League. Um, but if we go and do it there, it just like sends... I, I think it changes so many people's minds. I and mean, if we go and win at the Etihad, everyone suddenly goes, they're going to do it. Oh my word, they're going to do it, and we all know that there's still a long way to go. But I think the perception will be that. James, it's a great point uh, because in '98 I was thinking exactly that. We had on a fantastic run going early old, old Trafford, but you always thought, "Oh, Man United are still going to win it." You know what I mean? Still favourites for it, ten points clear and all that. We went up there, won one nil, played them, didn't play them off the park, but you could see we was a much better side. Walked off that day. We're going to win it, aren't we? Yeah. We're going to win it, and we did. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think it's that sort of game now that we can go there. I do think that City. Uh, uh, I think I was listening to what Robbie was saying the other day. I think City is still a bloody good team. I don't think they're as good as what they were last season. I don't think that they were. Like, you know what I mean? I, I think when you take out the players that they've let go, I don't think Docker is is better than. Than Grealish oh. was playing last season. I think like Grealish was. You remember this sort of side? He was on fire. They had players coming in that I, I remember. Uh, they played around about this time in the semi final. Mara scored hat trick in the semi final, and then was left out of the next game. And and you think, wow, how can he be left out in the next game? They go and win that game. There was a certain thing about that team. I I, I think this team's very very good and, and needs to be respected because it has top top players. Don't get me wrong, but. They've lost a few of their players, I think squad players, that come in and go. Like last season, for instance, if, if Walker was not playing, they wouldn't have mattered. Wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. Uh, I think it matters now if they're not playing. Certain players in that team have to be playing. And um, I, I feel that, you know, like, don't get me wrong, I'd, like, I'd love to still be um, the way Man City play and everything like that. You've got to admire them for that. But I don't think that they're as strong as what they was last season. And I think we are a bit stronger than what we was last season. Can, can, I, can I just say, um, I think if Martinelli's fit, he starts. That means Jesus doesn't start for me. Does mm. everyone agree? Yes. Basically what I'm saying is, Kai Havertz starts for me. Kai, if, if Martinelli's fit, he starts and Kai Havertz starts up top. Yeah. I wouldn't know? mind. I wouldn't mind Havertz or Jesus starting up top. I'll be honest. I, 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 know, I know that's going to be. Listen, if people are going to say, yeah, I don't mind Havertz starting up top. He, he deserves. It. He's 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 on form. But if it was to be Jesus, I wouldn't mind that either. I I, I, mean, I would because I I think it's not just only form. I just think that the havoc and the 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 effery, I won't I won't curse and the skullduggery and the needle and the big gameness that Havertz brings supersedes, I think, 
what Jesus brings through the middle. I think wide, if Martinez not fit, Jesus could be a problem. It could cause problem. Could, could cause issues. I just think this is a sort of game where I think his movement, his not staying through the middle, I think will will, will be good. I'm going to put my neck on the block here. I think if Havertz plays, I think he scores or assists. I think he scores or assists. And that's not because I think he's having a brilliant season. I just think this is the kind of game where his intellect and his his know-how of where to kind of put in positions can really, really benefit us in a way that I just don't think Jesus is the guy to take the chance that we'll get if 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 it comes. I, I don't think Jesus is, is the guy for this one through the middle. So for Could me... Play both. Well, I'd only play both if Martinelli's not fit. If Martinelli's fit, it's Kai Havertz up top for me. Um, Jesus hasn't just he hasn't convinced me that in the biggest game of the season you get one chance you you take it. I don't think he creates. I, I, I disagree. I, I, I think uh, being a little bit harsh on Joe because I look back at the Nottingham Forest game. If he doesn't play that game, we don't win that game. I agree, that, I but in the big games, in the big big games, I know that was a big game, but in the this is a massive game, Lee, and I just think for all of Kai Havertz's misses in front of goal, I think everything else he brings could benefit us overall in a way that I'm just not sure, Jesus. When did Havert, when did Havertz turn into the big game player? Well, look at his career. I mean, for, I mean, for Arsenal, though, I mean, you know, the the argument could be that his he found his form when we were smashing, you know, teams that we were pretty, you know, we were the favourites against. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just asking. But has, Je- but has Jesus ever been a big game player? No. Arsenal, well, I, do you know what I mean? You, well, I, I, guess I think, think there's a, you, you know, you do do this every time, Jordan. Last week it was Martinelli. Now it's now it's Jesus. You know what I mean? Like, I, <laughs> what, what do I, I do? I, what do I do? I'm going to back Jesus. I, I, I don't see. I, I look at games like I think he scored against Man United. He scored against Tottenham, uh, Seville this season. Oh, he was outstanding. Do you remember that game against Seville? If he yeah, doesn't play, yeah. that game, we don't win that game. You know, I mean, it was a big game that was, by the way, because we'd <laughs> lost to, we'd lost to Lons previously. Uh, I, I I think that you know he hasn't been quite the same. I, I've gone along with that since his knee injury, but he's been training for the last two weeks. Uh, he hasn't had those internationals. Havertz has played two up top in the last week or so. There could be a thing that he is very, very fresh for this game. And uh, I, I, I'm with, I'm with Turkish on this. Um, I, I'm a big fan of Havertz, as you know, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that he'll play at some stage. And I think that it has got to a stage with Havertz where you're thinking like, well, he's, he's in the eleven now, um, where probably. Six seven weeks ago, it was touch and go, but I would get him. I'd play him somewhere. But if Jesus is playing in this game, I'd be. I, I wouldn't be unhappy about it. I, I, I'm, no, I'm, I wouldn't be unhappy about it. But if, if I think if they're both fit, have and I also think off the bench, Jesus is a better sub. Yeah, that, that well, could be. Could be that. Could be. You know, I, I think like you know when you look at that. And we let's talk about Man City and all that. They haven't got a better player to come off the bench than what we've got. You know, what I mean, in, in that in that sense. So, in, in fact, if if you're taking off Havertz, just say Havertz is playing. You're taking off Havertz, or you're taking off um, Jesus, you're bringing one of them. You're making the team better. You know, what I mean, in some sort of sense. I will. I will say though. Sorry to sorry to spoil the party. I will say though that as much as I'm gen- I'm confident we can go do something. I'm excited about the game. I don't feel scared. Like you, you know, no. it's not one of those. Oh, we're here. You know, let's forego this weekend because we know it's going to be three 0 minimum. I don't feel any of that, but I do feel they're still going to field Rodri, De Bruyne, Bernardo, yeah, Phil Foden, and then one of Grealish or Doku. Look, the likes of Nunes and Kovacic. We know they've got quality, but we know they're not Gundogan. Still good players. Erling Haaland up front. Julian Alvarez. He seems to love for a big game, so I don't know if he'll use him. And then, and then you're kind of like. You know, if we have a bit of a shaky first five minutes and those mm. those players look on it, and then you start going, oh, well, can we counter? And I know we're saying, let's test that Walker hamstring and Vardial's not been all that. Yeah, but Ake, Akanji, Walker, Stones, Diaz, take your pick. I don't, I, they're all, they're all going to be very difficult to come up against. Um which is why I kind of hope it is a cage game. I kind of hope it is boring. I've really been taking in what you were saying, comparing it to the Tottenham game two years ago, Jordan, saying this game actually does require a little bit of aggression and all that. City are a weird team. It feels like City, you could rattle them, mm. but it also feels like maybe, 
you don't want to give them a reminder of why they're champions and why this is important. I feel like one of our best chances of winning the league is not just us being brilliant, but also City being a bit bored. Like, we've done it now. Like, we won the treble. And I, I don't know. I, I almost don't want them that spark reignited in them to go, hold on. No, no, let us remind you. I, I think part of why they went on such a good run last year was they couldn't believe that the youngest side in the Premier League were eight points clear at one point. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? I kind of feel like there's this, like, you almost don't want to poke the bear too much and just keep uh, it sensible. A win, a win for us would do that, though. Yeah, but at least it's done and we can go on with our business. We can run away with our <laughs> no, no rattle than five minutes in. Like, I think, I think, I think, look, it's a roundabout way of saying if we keep our heads and look really professional and look really kind of calm, Arsenal go from pretenders to genuine contenders. I think the day they start really acting like they are, like, no, we belong here. Like, you know, we're not, we can come here and win. We, we're, we're a part of this. And then what you do, and which is more in line with what you're saying, Jordan, is you don't let yourselves get bullied. If Haaland yeah. does get in a little bit of a scrap, if, if there's anything like the De Bruyne Arteta thing on the touchline again, I expect everyone to run up and, and shove him the fuck away from our manager. Like, that's where I want to see that needle. That's where I see that fight that, you know. I, I think that's the most important thing. I think Lee said it at the top. I think we have to step into the Etihad on the weekend as if we're going to win, as if we belong. We have to not go there and think, oh, it's Man City champions, treble winners, European Cup winners. Let's just try and see what we can do. We have to step in there, chest out, you know, six foot plus. We've got some big players walking there like, we have come here to show you we are ready this time. We are ready. David Rea has got to be an absolute beast. He was he was a he was brilliant in the in the in the Porto penalty shootout. This is a game where he's got to announce himself as the Arsenal goalkeeper with a brilliant performance. Ben White has been on great form this last five, six, seven games. He's got a clamp Phil Foden and make Phil Foden know you're a little man. You're 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 hot, you're talented, but no, no, no. I'm gonna let you know I'm here. If Kivio starts, he's got to make people realize actually, remember, I'm a center back, not a left back, but that's how good I am. At left back, Gabriel and Saliba, those two have been the best partnership in the league this year. But now they're going to be tested. Remind Haaland, no, 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 <laughs> Saliba, I'm here this time. I wasn't last time, but I'm here this time. Gabriel's probably our player of the year, bar Rice. Remind them, Declan Rice, this is why we bought him. This is the game we bought Declan Rice for. Remind them, Saka, go and get player of the year. Go and remind them that actually full phone is not on your level. Go and do something that makes people realise in the big game, you are the guy. Shut Jordan up about not world class. Martinelli, give us a game. Give us the game that makes Jordan realise actually you are the guy as well. I don't know who will play alongside Odegaard. Be the captain that can do what we did at the Old Trafford all those years ago and won it. Be the captain that actually says, no, we're not flaky Arsenal anymore under William Gallas. You've got a real captain now. Let's go get it. And Kai Havertz, be a prick. Be an absolute prick. Pull people, wind people up, square up to people, make them know we're not the Arsenal of, of old where you can bully us anymore. Go there, win the game, get the hell out. Let's win this title. Arteta on the sidelines. Do what you got to do. Do what you got to do, but don't get distracted. Some made a really good point to me that our, what Guardiola does is he gets into the histrionics and he distracts the opposing manager. And before you know it, City have scored three goals in, in 10 minutes and the game's gone. Don't fall for it. Do not fall for it. And finally, the fans that are going, I don't know if you're going, Leo Turkish and even James, the fans have got to be loud. They've got to be loud and make them know we don't care what the, the, the Etihad. We're here to win this game and support our boys. Let's go there. Let's go get it. Because I don't want to do this pod next this, this time next week. And I'm hearing excuses. I don't want to hear about referee. I don't want to hear about this guy was injured. I don't, I don't want to hear no excuses. This is what we've worked for. So go to the Etihad, get the three points. Let's go and pick up our Premier League title, please. Is that all right? You know, that's a fantastic speech. I feel like we're going to win now. Like, you know what I mean, well done. Jordan. Let's go get it, man. I'm not on a long oh, thing like anymore. That. I like that. You say about the referee. You say about the referee. Last, the, the game at, at the end <laughs> The I game love you, Turkish. They should have been down to 10 men. Like, you know yes. what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, uh, that's true. So, like, you know, and it didn't matter, did it? Because we didn't, we went and won the game. No one talks about that now. Right. But the fact of the matter is, they should. So, like, I, I agree with Jordan saying there. <clears throat> this have no excuses. Let's just go there and just give it a. Uh, listen, what I, I, I want to walk out there, like, at the end of the game. 
thinking, well, we give it our best. That's why we won or we give it our best. We weren't quite good enough. I don't want us to go, oh, we, oh, he didn't turn up. He didn't play. He didn't play. Let's just go out there and just give it a, a, a real good go. Agreed. Yeah, that's it. Um, is there any other positions that we need to really debate? I don't think so. Yes, I mean, one position has got to be filled. Is, is the left back position because oh. both players have played um, internationals, but they've been proper internationals, haven't they? Like Kivia, for instance, has played like oh, yeah. um, yes. qualifiers, 120 minutes. And yeah, 120 minutes of that. And, and obviously, um, Shinchenko has as well, even though he was on the bench in the last one. So I'm a little bit concerned about that position. Like, not quite as fresh, you know, like. You know, even like uh, um, Declan Rice, I felt even though he played you know, um, that whole um, a whole um, friendly thing, I don't think he was at full pace. I, you know, you can be, but Kivia and, and Shinchenko have had to be. So that that concerns me a little bit. Who well, do we play? Then? Well, Tommy Asu has been playing. Uh, uh, sorry, training, isn't he? So yeah. um, he didn't he didn't go into the nationals. Does he come in because he's fresher, or, or 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 what we saying? I think that's a. I think it's a um, something that they're going to have to think about. If he can and give us an see... hour, I'd start him. Yeah. So how do we see? It's so difficult because because it, I've seen it go both ways. I've seen a player who you're not sure if he's ready. He gets called upon, and he's the difference maker. I've also seen them use, and then you go. Why did we use him? This guy's not played for months. He's not ready. Like it, it really is going to be down to what Arteta sees in training. How does Kivio mm. look? When he comes back. Has Tomiyasu really kind of been training well and looking ready, looking sharp for it? Because Arteta does trust Tomiyasu. He does, you know, doesn't play in the Sunday at home against Liverpool. You got a job on Salah to do. Who? You know, it, it's Tommy yeah, James. Do you know who played in the behind the closed doors friendly? I know it was a weakened team, but did, did they... Tomiyasu got minutes? Mm. Think no, 45 in an hour. No, no. I, I'm, um, you know, as the season goes on, don't get me wrong. I think they could get Timber up to scratch. I have a feeling that they almost don't want to. I, I wasn't. Like, no. I was I'm like, when like, when is he going to play, back. James? Next season. Yeah. When are you going to play him? Well, that's it. Like what? Yeah. Like what, in, in what scenario, if everyone else is fit, do you use Timber? Because if we need to hold on, you're turning to. Tommy Asu first. If you need more attacking talent, it, it, it's more if there's another injury crisis. And actually, they're looking at this guy going, "Well, he is fit. You know, he's just not match ready." That that that's why I, I think there's a chance he gets maybe five minutes. You know, on the pitch. I, I don't know. I if, think if, if Arsenal ain't got a chance of winning a title, you might see him. So basically, I don't want to see him. No, yeah, you know, I agree, I mean, I, I I, you know, I don't. I don't even I see where he's going to come into the squad. You're not going to leave him. You're not going to take him in in place of Tommy Asu or or Shinchenko at the moment. I, I, I just don't see it. I, I, I'd love to see it. Listen, I'd love to be. It was pictures of him the other day. He's got muscle on muscle. You know what I mean? Like, but um, well, also yeah. actually, sorry to cut you, but there is a reason to play him, which is that Arteta signed him, and clearly, really, really rates him. And if he is ready, and if he is fit, okay. then Arteta is going to go. He's good enough. I want to use him. Like, we, we don't know what this guy's full potential is. I know it's hard to think that a guy can impact a game massively from fullback, but then what have Guardiola and Arteta and many other coaches taught us over the last few years? So, I don't, I don't know. I, I tend to think we won't really see him much. We won't see him any important capacity. Um, and if we do, then we've either had an injury crisis yeah, or, that's Arteta, really. or Arteta. It's a horrendous really injury. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that. To, to, it's not only to the, the recovery time for it. It's you know coming back from that. You, all your body's changed and all that. Like you know, what I mean, I've, I've known I've known people that play. You know, that had the ACL. You know, it's a it's a horrendous injury, horrendous. And I'm some guys never come back the same. By the way, don't. Yeah. a lot of them. Don't. Most don't. Yeah, most don't. I'm just thinking about. Sorry, I know you want to wrap Turkey. I'm just thinking about kind of key players for this game, and I'm thinking about older guards and. The, the performance, uh, Odegaard at White Hart Lane, was it last season where we beat them 2-0? Oh, was it last season? Last, or the year before? Last, yeah. He was absolutely brilliant. That's the sort of... I'm just thinking about the kind of changing of the guards and I'm just thinking Klopp's leaving this summer. 
if we can beat City and announce ourselves as the team next year, the team, a Liverpool, a clock, a, a clockless Liverpool, you know, Guardiola, City kind of with the De Bruyne on the wane, you know, City have had their time. I just feel like this is a game that signifies so much more than just three points on the weekend. I think it, it could signify the yeah. change oh, in the guard. It does this feel could be like where that. Arteta really arrives. I just, I'm just thinking of who are the key players. I think Odegaard, I need a big game from him. Rice will get a big game from him. Saliba and Gabriel, Saka. I think, I think Rice, key. Rice and Odegaard versus Rodri and De Bruyne is the is the, the midfield Agreed. battle. I think Agreed. you know if Odegaard can escape Rodri, if if Rice can lock yeah. down De Bruyne, then. Agreed. We win the game, in my opinion, but Agreed. it's easier said than done. Um, I think it's one. Of, I think for Arsenal, one of the front three's got got to turn up, and I, and I'll say that you've got City, they've got Haaland, Liverpool got Salah. On a god-given day, they can get two or three against any team in the world. Mm. They they can they, they can see that Charles, Arsenal. They can see Charles City. Yeah, so yeah. They do. Be one of those big games. That Saka's had a run at their fullback. You want to see that Martinelli. For me, that's that's them. it. Like you know, someone like if we win two one, for instance, like Saka gets both goals, or or it's Martinelli, or or it's Havertz. It, I just feel that the difference between the three teams is that they've got one of them. They've got that with Ireland. They've got that. So we haven't got that. Even you know, as good as Saka is. As good as Martinelli is, one of them has got to come if if they're playing. One of them's got to come up like bang bang. First, well, you're starting one nil down. You're starting one nil down. They're going to score a goal, so we've got to score at least two. They've got they've, they're going to score at least one goal. So we have to start from the position of we've got to get at least two goals. So really as you say, Lee, the front three have got to have got to deliver. One to of them's got to turn up. Yeah, I do. It do I, I, them scoring one goal just sounds so right, but. I want, I want, I want, I want us to listen. City, the city of before, where they're ch they're creating chances in abundance, and and mm. you know they they they're wiping the floor with teams. You know, there's there's games there where they've just got two ones, one nils, quite a few of them this season. So yeah, I want true. Gabriel to be able to go for the clean sheet. Listen, true. it's Etihad, so I do expect City to score, but I also expect us to keep it tight enough that they won't have enough big chances to get any more than one. Yeah. But we'll find out. We'll find yeah. out Sunday. And we'll find out how we're thinking about Sunday pretty much now. Let me bring up the prediction table. Not Well, I say not much change. No change aside from a point deduction for Mr. Jordan Jarrett Bryan. Oh, jeez. No mercy shown, Lee. No <laughs> mercy <laughs> shown. Yeah, he went yeah. to you, Lee. <laughs> he went to you for some support. I went to the judge. <laughs> yeah. No mercy. First time offender. No love. All right. No, that's what's yeah. that. Yeah. I, I feel like first offence, you should be let off. It's like when you go to court and you you, you get a caution, do not you? I, I do feel that he deserves a caution. No, well, let's throw a like... packet of fruit pastels. You know what I mean? I won't do it again. You know, it's first time. Or we can yeah. do it like you know, like um, if you get a if you get caught by the cameras, you can put someone else's name on the file for them to get the point. So, do you want the point deduction, Lee? <laughs> <laughs> All this turned out because of you, really. Like, let's be honest about me? it. Me, like, yes. Why? Jared, by not turning up when Jordan has turned up for every show, and because of other bad behaviour from early, other people, early as he's well, he's been punished. When does uh, when does my reputation change? Because I haven't missed a show or been. No, no, late. you haven't now. You haven't now. But like, yeah, but when, you know, it's, you, you you know, which is fantastic. You. You've gone to prison and you've not reoffended. Really He's reformed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, reformed. That's what we like to hear. You know, but before before you was sent to prison and punished, you was continually Lee, doing it. Lee, um, Lee, Tur <laughs> Turkish is that guy that goes into schools and talks to kids and like, yeah, guys, I was a regular offender. I was always yeah. at AFTV, Forever Arsenal. <laughs> and I did the time. I learned my lessons. But honestly... Punctuality is really important, kids. Punctuality <laughs> is so important. <laughs> I've got two championship yeah. rings. Fuck the late. I've got two rings, mate. <laughs> well, I, I, my, 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 my feeling is a caution, but obviously, um, I, I, you know, you two can outvote me, like, you know, so it's up to you two. I think 
let him off because I still have hope of Lee finishing bottom of this table. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jay. All right, did that to the point. <laughs> <laughs> what what a back, reason. Jordan. I've got your back to Yeah, just a caution for this one, guys. Right? Just a caution. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Appreciate don't it. think me because it's got nothing to do with me, that one. So. <laughs> <laughs> just think Lee, Lee and James. Um, there we go. There we go. Point, point oh, thank you very one. much. Uh, you thank will you be hearing much. from my lawyer if I finish last. <laughs> you will be hearing from my lawyer. Um, James, go on, kick us off with your prediction leading the way, six point lead at the top of the table. I've said on the preview, spoiler, um, 1 1. I will stick with it. But if I had, God, I feel delusional. But if I had to pick a winner, I'd pick us. I just, I'm, I'm really excited. I don't know if that's the excitement and the occasion taking over. Um, Might be, but so what? That's what it's about. Go one, well, yeah, it is what it's about. Um, one, but I'm going to go 1 1. 1 1. Um, one, one. I'm not going to spoil my prediction on box to box, but I am going to go with a 2 1 Arsenal win. <clears throat> Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going. I, I'm going. To, I honestly thought you'd go one-one as well, like that. I mean, I'm going. I believe Arsenal are going to go in there and win. I'm going to go there. I, I'm saying two-one. I'm going to change that now to one-nil. I think Arsenal. Nah, sod it. Sod it. Two-nil. Let's have it. Come two on. Nil. <laughs> two-nil. He said, "Sod it." Oh, two-nil. I love you. Four-nil. We're going to do it. <laughs> That was our last. That was our last win there, in it two 0 twenty fifteen. Zola and Giroud. Giroud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All right. In so I've changed my prediction last second, um, and I'm going to do something that I never ever do, and I'll probably never ever do it again. I'm going to make a prediction with my heart and not my head. I'm going to go. I'm going to go three two Arsenal. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Th- I'm gonna go three two Arsenal. I'm never. I would never do this ever again. But I'm. I'm. Why I wouldn't thinking, you? Know, because two, two. your head, your head has got you to bottom of the table. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to start using something else. <laughs> it's a fair point. It's a fair point. It's a fair point. <laughs> said, the only time I'm doing it, people. The only time I'm gonna do something. And yeah. if we win three two Turkish, believe me, yeah. every prediction is with the heart. Time. From here yeah. in. The only time he's gonna compromise on this brilliant <laughs> formula. <laughs> well, um, listen, how good is that? Look, we're playing Manchester City, and none of us have predicted a City win. We'll lose five now. Now it might well happen, but that's because we're confident in our in our in our team. We're confident. That we can um, we can get something from this game, and that is what the team's done for us. That's what yes, the team over this last five six weeks. That's what we've built up. We built up confidence. And listen, people, people, might, well, opposition will call it delusion. Listen, it's Etihad. We know how difficult it is. We are just confident we can take something from it, and we're in a great place at this moment in time. But that doesn't mean that we we think that City can't do it. City are City are are they the favourites for it? City are the favourites for it. The home team, one point behind. Yeah. But yeah. Lee's right. Imagine we did this pod two years ago, where the predictions would be, or even last year, the predictions. I can't remember them off the top of my head. This year feels very different. It feels very different. Also, Turkish. That all that whole City stuff, like and why they can win or whatever. That's obvious. That goes without saying. A friend who thinks because we haven't said it, we don't think it. Yeah, but like, yeah. obviously, obviously, the best Premier League midfielder ever, one of the best strikers in the Premier League ever, one of the best managers in the Premier League ever. <clears> obviously, <throat> they might beat us. Obviously, the treble winners might win. What might win? News. Obviously, the team that won three Premier League titles in a row might win a fourth. You know what? We it know is. all that. Like we know all that. What? Cool. Well, we're going to sit here an hour and talk about oh, City could do this though. City could do that, and City will probably do... no. We're going to talk about why this is different for Arsenal and what it could be. And that's it. Like, it's well, the, otherwise, it's the best happening? team in the world versus the best team in the league at this moment in time. The most informed team, let me say. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. City can win. Arsenal win, can win. It can be a draw. It can be KG. They could be a again. They, like, yeah, they, they could. could they could flex and go, let us just remind you who we are. 
Exactly. Yeah. And I wouldn't be like, oh my God. That's the fascination of it. That is the fascination of it. It's, it's important from us, from our point of view. We just do, we do, we stick to doing what we've done up until this point. That's, I don't want to see Arsenal fall apart by <clears throat> the occasion or trying to do something that they don't normally do. We've got uh -huh. to this point for a reason. We are a good team. So just apply the things that you've done up until now and, and, and carry on. Don't lose yourselves. Just work hard. We're defensively good. We're good from set pieces. We're good on the counter. We can keep the ball. We can win the ball back well. Just do the things that have, done, that have kept us top of the league or kept us in contention up until now. Don't lose yourselves. Do not lose yourselves. Yeah, 100%. <clears throat> That's the predictions and prediction table out of the way. And that just leaves one thing left and that's the most important thing the comments of the day make sure you hit the like button people thousand likes one hour five minutes in imagine we went over an hour there was nothing to review it's just a preview i say just it's the biggest game of the season maybe the emirates era and the business end is here there's everyone got comments huh? sorry there's a therapeutic conversation you know sometimes yeah. the show doesn't have to be you know we've got five topics to talk about let's read that sometimes it's just how are we feeling what are we thinking um, yeah yeah, I, I can't okay. lie. About 15 20 minutes in, I clocked that because I was trying to work out the chapters, and I thought chapters ain't going to work for this one because it's just flowing from one thing to the next <laughs> thing to the next <laughs> thing. So, people, <laughs> if you're, you're after chapters, um, this might not be the one for you. It's just a one big show, Man City. Um, yeah, enjoy, enjoy. Has everyone got comments of the day ready, or can I dock points? Yeah, there's some great ones. Go on, you go for it. I've got a few, I've got two. Yeah, I've got a few as well. I've got a few as well. Uh, has, has anybody got the hot dog one? No. Ah, uh, had. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was funny, like you know what I mean, like you know. So. Seven fifty. I actually got to say, when when uh, James did say that, it was very very funny. You know what I mean. Thank so, you. so that's the one that I've got, but I can change it if you want, like you know. I thought. No, nah, I like that one. I like that one. It's uh, true, though. Like, like okay, seven fifty for this hot dog. Leave me alone, Martin. I think it's absolute class. Right? <laughs> <laughs> My well, one, yeah. Uh, it was. A, I, I think at the end of the day, that comment went a little bit un over everybody at the time because we, you know. But when I look back, at it, it was hilarious. So well done, James. It was a fantastic comment. I missed that one. What was that one? I missed that. No, was you were there. Go on. Go on. You say it, James. It's your moment because it was fantastic. No, no. Well, very kind. Um, no, you were talking about. Um, we're talking Odegaard. about Odegaard and doing the whole, you know, this all the time. And I was saying, I don't need it you know, after five minutes at home to hold him when I've just got my hot dog. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm paying yeah, 7 yeah. for it. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, 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 basically, my message. Um, <laughs> yeah. I didn't remember that. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> my, I've, got, I've got a few here. <clears throat> I, I like that. When you think about it, right, just for a it is quite relevant. If it, I can't, like, when I'm chuckling, could you know what I mean? Like, he's doing that. Fuck, I have got me up, dog, and me beer here. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? It's good. I think it's up. Really good. Playing a football, let me eat my hot yeah. You know what I mean? Well, you, you know, he's expensive as well. You know what I mean? I don't want to be throwing it up. You know what I mean? I have a bag of chips is like 12 pounds now. Um, I've got three here. Sorry, let me pick this one out. It's quite a long one. But Abraham says, I can see how brilliant this win felt for Turkish because it came full circle to how he entered the AFTV scene in the first place with those back-to-back 5-1 -back losses to Bayern. What a ride it's been, full of ups and downs, but it feels like all of the pressure from the fans, Turkish being one of them, for a change in hierarchy and manager has begun to finally pay off. Joining AFTV with an inverted shirt of Wenger out wasn't bad at all. <laughs> <laughs> so I was the first one to bring inverting to the club. Can you imagine that before before Arteta was even a thing? I inverted. I inverted as a fan. It's crazy. It's crazy. Big up Abraham, man. Big up. I actually liked Aaron's one. James is as Italian as a Chicago town pizza. I know. Oh, yeah, I had that. One, I, I had like, that I like as well. <laughs> I like them ones. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I've got. I've just got one more. Then I'll go quickly. I've just got to hear from someone called jo Jordan Boom. Boom man nine nine one three. Um, no way Jordan watched. Uh, uh, no way Jordan watched after ninety minutes. He can't go that long without sex. Now my response to that is, how the bloody hell do you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually had that one there as well. You know, 
<laughs> Did you see Roscoe's one where it said Jordan has yeah. a life? No way he watched 130 minutes plus pens. <laughs> I did see that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There was a lot of that. <laughs> there, <laughs> there was. There was. Um, I've, got some, I've got a couple similar ones. Um, I did have that Roscoe one. Uh, creator says Jordan probably got bored after the 90 minutes and went to rewatch Griselda, which I enjoyed. Um, this one from Sam Sega says, <laughs> leave, leave like this. Uh, took Turks' advice and subscribed to James B. Incredible. After all these years, insomnia, insomnia has gone just like that. Oh, no. What's his name? I just want to send him a thank you. Sam. <laughs> Well that's Sam. <laughs> uh, I, I wanna, I oh, wanna no, I've got another message from Graham this week. <laughs> Just <laughs> like With the link, yeah. Oh. I was reading yeah. that comment thinking, oh, this is sweet. But then it just ended the way it ended, I went, oh. <laughs> Very funny. I'm gonna slowly to subscribe though, that's what matters, James. You know what I mean? That's true. Yeah, as long as you don't unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Always look at the positive. <laughs> Going to slowly but surely wrap it up here. Um, before I do wrap it up, people, I want to say obviously big up Jordan, James, Lee as always, but big up you as well. Um, the other day or a week ago now, Big Six held a little community event street debate. We we invited fans to you know do some content with us in person. It was a big risk, but it's a risk that paid off well. Why am I mentioning Big Six here? Because a lot of the people that came through were Arsenal fans and a lot of the Arsenal fans mentioned Forever Arsenal as their favourite podcast. So I just want to say love for the love again. Um, and, you know, when we mentioned a live show or a meet up or, or something along those lines a few weeks ago, we meant it. So, you know, we will get to work on that. Hopefully, end of the season, we win the league and, you know, we have a Forever Arsenal link up. Regardless of the league, we will link up. But I just want to say love for the love, man. You make this show what it is, the comments of the day, the, the engagement. We love it. And it seems that you love it. So big up everyone that's made the show what it is. And yeah, keep keep leaving your comments, thoughts, what you want to see from us, all of that. Because obviously in the summer, without no games, we can do something a little different. So it'd be good to have your ideas. Comment section is there for all of that, as well as the banter. Big up James. Go subscribe. James Gooniverse is the app. But if you search James Bayliss, you'll find them. Lee Judges TV. Search that. You'll find them. Um, Jordan's got the Not For Clicks podcast. Whisper it. Whisper it loudly. Whisper it loudly. Come on, come on. I didn't want to butcher it. Whisper it loudly. No, no, Black no. academics. All if you that. search them up, people, you'll find him. I'm obviously taking a show at the end of Big Six, but love for the love, people. We'll wrap it up here. We'll be back again after the City game, before the Luton game. So it'll probably be a Monday, early Monday show for us. Early Monday show. So make sure you're there. Make sure you're subscribed. Hit the um, like button. Previews coming out. Box to box. Combined 11. Big up, Big Steve. And yeah, we'll be back real soon. Peace.